the Yay or Nay Show with Alex B. A sports show for sports fans by a sports fan. And now, here is Alex C. All right, here we go. This is the Yay or Nay Show. This is a sports show for sports fans by a sports fan. A lot of stuff to go over today. Whatever you do, do not divert your attention because you're going to miss a lot if you miss even a minute. All right, here we go. Let's start with some of the yay or nay questions that have come back. Um, do you like the Manning cast? Now, you know, Monday Night Football has the Manning cast. Eli and Peyton, they do the Manning cast for Monday Night Football. Uh, it's a different take on Monday Night Football. They normally interview some people, have some generic conversations. Some football related, some not football related. I kind of tried to watch it a couple times. To be honest, look, let me give you my opinion first. Uh, It's horrible. It's hard to watch. It's like screeching your nails against a chalkboard. It is bad TV. However, with that being said, uh, from my opinion to yours, this is the way the voting came back. Uh, 67% of the people. 67% of the people that voted said they do like the Manning cast from Monday Night Football. Uh, I am definitely among the 33% that cannot handle it. It is just absolutely horrific. It's hard to watch. They got nothing to talk about. I get it. They try to interject their personalities, but it's horrible. A lot of dead air. Uh, Have a hard time watching the game if you're trying to follow the game because they're too busy trying to be the center of attention, uh, taking their focus away from the game way too often. Uh, I can't do it. It's just horrible. Um, Let's see what we got here. Should Kyler Murray play against the 49ers? Now, I asked this question prior to last week's game against the 49ers. Like I said, uh, there's been so many stories that have been coming out. I haven't had time to read back all the answers to the questions. I did promise you today I was going to get back to you with a lot of answers to the questions. So, again, uh, this was in reference to last week's game. Should Kyler Murray play against the 49ers? This came back 52% of the people that voted said, yes, Kyler Murray should have played in last Sunday's game. I'm a little surprised at that because, again, a lot of things could have happened if Kyler Murray were to play and then get injured even further. But yet 52% of the people that voted said, yes, that Kyler Murray should have played in last Sunday's game. Um, This one was prior to the end of the World Series. Can the Astros win the final two to win the series? 75% of the people that voted said, no, the Astros would not be able to win game six and seven. And it turns out that 75% of the people that voted were absolutely correct. Um, Let's see if there's any other ones. Uh, Let's see. Here's one. Uh, Because again, it's a long story, but I had some personal polls that I did among my sports polls. So I'm kind of sifting through them as we speak. Uh, are you tired of people attacking sports teams over their mascot names? Now, as we know, you know, there's been a lot of stuff going on. It all started years ago with the Washington football team, formerly the Redskins, uh, Cleveland Indians now changing their name. Now you got the Tomahawk chop being, you know, under attack and the Braves name itself and other teams, other mascots. So, I asked the question, are you tired of people attacking sports teams over their mascot names? This one came back. 57% of the people that voted said, yes, they are tired of people attacking teams because of their mascot names. Uh, And then, of course, I alluded to it a moment ago, Tomahawk Chop World Series. Should the Tomahawk Chop be banned from baseball? 82% of the people that voted said no. The Tomahawk Chop should not be banned from baseball. I am definitely among the 82%. Make no mistake about that. Um, The Cardinals-Packers game. Great game. It was going to be, before some of the injuries that took place, called the greatest game in Thursday night history. That was prior to the injuries. Then the game happened, and I asked the question. Was the Cardinals-Packers game the best Thursday night football game ever? For Thursday night football, that is. 100% of the people that voted said yes. It was, in fact, the best Thursday night football game in history. So, Robert Sarver, we all know about the allegations against him. And we're going to go over that here in a minute, actually, because I got a couple of new stories breaking on that one. Uh, And I asked the question, do you think it's bad that the local media is not talking about the Robert Sarver allegations? 75% of the people that voted that said, yes, it is bad that the local media chose not to talk 
about Robert Sarver. Of course, they waited until the four letter network, you know, dropped its report. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about it. Uh, I haven't watched local news in a couple of days. I probably need to get back to it to see what they're saying. Uh, I'm told by family members, local media still is talking about it, but I don't know how much and how hard they're going into it. Because again, when this thing first dropped, they were in all out defense mode or they were in all out oblivious mode. Like, oh, I don't know enough. I got to read more. We'll get back to you as information drops. So they either were trying to downplay it or they were trying to defend Sarver. And it's interesting with some of the new information that's dropped, what kind of mode they're in. So I'll definitely be watching the news tonight and talk to you about that tomorrow. Um, speaking of Sarver, staying on that topic, I had another question. Do you think the allegations against Robert Sarver could be true? 54, only 54% of the people that voted said yes, that they believe that some of the allegations against Robert Sarver could in fact be true. So those are some of the ANA questions. I have a ton more that have come back. I'll get you some more of those results tomorrow. But again, there's so many things to talk about today. Um, I don't want to go through all of the answers that have come back in regards to those questions. Uh, let's really quickly go to this. Let's see what, what we got here. College football. All right. The rankings have been adjusted. New rankings have come out. You have Georgia at number one. You have Alabama at number two. You have Oregon at number three. You now have Ohio State at number four. So Oregon, Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. Just below, you got Cincinnati. A lot of people still whining and crying about Cincinnati not being in the top four because they're undefeated. Look, undefeated doesn't mean you're one of the elite. Strength of schedule matters. It's one of the things I've been complaining about in regards to the NFL. You have all these uh, national media guys trying to tell you that, you know, the Dallas Cowboys are one of the best teams in football, yet uh, strength of schedule just got your butts kicked by the Denver Broncos, but I don't want to go over that right now. What I do want to go over is, again, uh, a lot of people complaining also about Michigan being number six over Michigan State because in head-to-head, -head, Michigan State beat Michigan. Uh, Michigan State suffered a loss. Michigan won last week over Indiana. So it propelled Michigan to number six. Look, I don't see a problem with this. I know all the national media guys are trying to whine and complain and say that head-to-head -head matters. And if head to head's going to matter, then Michigan State should be above Michigan, except Michigan didn't lose this weekend. Michigan State did. So they obviously have to take a hit. They took the hit. Michigan rises above them. In actuality, it really makes sense. Michigan above Michigan State, despite the head-to-head. -head. Again, because Michigan won their following game, Michigan State didn't handle their business and lost. So it makes sense to me that Michigan would be propelled above Michigan State. Now, it all could equate itself out. A lot of big games coming up. Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, all these teams are going to be playing each other. So there's a lot of big games to come up. It doesn't matter at this point anyway. It's all going to equate and balance out in the end. I think right now the polls, the way they're going, going pretty good. Cincinnati uh, could still be on the outside looking in when this is all said and done. Because, again, strength of schedule. Cincinnati doesn't play anybody, and they haven't beat anybody with any strength. Their schedule's soft. They beat a bunch of soft teams, and they have barely won most of their games. They have struggled to win most of their games. And, again, their games are against softball teams, and Cincinnati has struggled to beat them. So it doesn't matter that you're undefeated when these national media guys say the stuff that they say, saying that Cincinnati deserves to be in the top four. You don't deserve to be in the top four when you have a soft schedule and you're barely winning the games against soft teams. That doesn't earn you the right to be called an elite and be propelled into the top four. Sorry, doesn't work that way. Doesn't make sense. So Cincinnati, if they don't make it into the top four at all this year, big wham. Learn how to schedule games against top-ranked opponents. Learn how to play against power five opponents that matter. Quit playing a softball schedule against a bunch of weak teams thinking that if you go undefeated against a bunch of weak teams, that that somehow is supposed to propel you into the top four. So I don't care if Cincinnati makes it or not because your schedule's weak, and that is nobody's fault but your athletic director because they're the ones that set the schedule. If you want in, you need to play against Power 5 conference teams and try and beat somebody that matters. Quit trying to win your way in by going undefeated against a bunch of weak schools. And then 
Struggle against the weak schools. Struggle is the key word against weak schools. If you're struggling against weak schools, how is anybody who understands the game of football supposed to believe that you're going to be able to battle against Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State? or even Oregon for that matter. And then there's those that want to say that Oregon doesn't deserve to be there because they lost against Stanford. Uh, Hello, common sense. If you watch football, again, I don't know that the national media guys watch football at all. If they actually paid attention, actually watched the games, they would understand that Oregon was missing a bunch of starters, including their star wide receiver, when they went against Stanford. That's the reason why they struggled. That's the reason why they lost. Now, injuries aren't really a big deal for Oregon. They got their star receiver back. And ever since then, Oregon's been getting stronger. Oregon's been winning games, and they've been winning them convincingly. So Oregon deserves to be at number three. Again, the strength of schedule is there. They beat Ohio State. Yes, they lost the game when they lost a lot of stars, but now they have their people back. They're gelling, they're playing, they're on fire, and it's theirs to lose. And that's how it should be for Oregon. For Cincinnati, you haven't played anybody. Your strength of schedule is weak. You don't have anything resume-wise to say that you deserve to be in the top four. And I would easily, and I would easily bet my bottom last dollar against Cincinnati if they were going to go up against any of the four teams in Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, and Ohio State. And I would easily bet that they wouldn't even come close to covering whatever the point spread was. Cincinnati can't even cover the point spread against the pathetic teams that are on their schedule now. And they're the ones that are supposed to win. And they're having a hard time winning against bad teams. So don't tell me how Cincinnati is supposed to be in the top four when you can't beat bottom-of-the-barrel teams. Sorry, doesn't work that way. You don't deserve, you don't even deserve to be number five, Cincinnati. You really don't. Maybe outside the top 10 somewhere, maybe number 11, maybe. But as far as being a top five team, you don't even deserve to be a top five team. Your resume doesn't put you there. Your strength of schedule doesn't put you there. The fact that you're barely beating bottom of the barrel teams doesn't make you deserve to be there. So for these national media guys to make these weak arguments, trying to convince everybody that Cincinnati deserves to be in the top four, look, I think they're just trying to win their way into people's conversations so they can sound relevant. Because there's no way for anybody who knows and watches football that you could honestly say and with a sincere, true heart say that Cincinnati deserves to be in the top four. Anybody who's saying that, sports media-wise, is just trying to get a hot take moment and become relevant because there's no way in the world they can say that and actually mean it. That's the biggest joke in the world. All right, moving on. We got the other topic that's big on everybody's mind, mine included. Here's what makes me mad. Okay, I wouldn't even talk about this again because I've talked about this for the last couple of days. I actually did not intend on talking about it today, but then new information came out, so obviously the topic came up, so we got to discuss it one more time just to drive a point home really quickly. Uh, Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, they were fined for COVID-19 protocol violations. And here's the deal. So Aaron Rodgers got fined $14,000. That's a joke. That's a joke. That doesn't affect his income in any way, shape, or form. Here's the reason why that's a joke. And it's simple. And it's one quick line to prove the point. $14,000 is a fine that gets attached to Aaron Rodgers. However, He makes millions upon millions of dollars, endorsements, his salary, bonuses. He makes millions upon millions of dollars. But that same $14,000 against other players who get fined, who make only a couple of hundred grand a year, now that's a big deal. So you have a fine that does affect someone financially if they're not of star caliber, but when it comes to stars being fined, you don't give them a fine that would actually affect them financially. So what message does that send to everybody? That is the question. What message does that send to people? You have Aaron Rodgers not getting suspended, not getting any penalty whatsoever financially that matters. Basically, it's a, not even a slap on the wrist. It's more of a kiss on the cheek because 
That's what kind of a joke this fine is. And the fact that he doesn't get suspended is a bigger joke. And then you have national media guys like Colin Cowherd and, you know, all these other people, you know, that are running around saying Keyshawn and everybody else and Joy Taylor. And they're all saying that, you know, nothing should happen to Aaron Rodgers for misleading people. Well, here's the problem. He didn't mislead. He lied. He lied. The fact that you guys are trying to give him the advantage of using the word mislead instead of a blatant lie, which he actually did tell, was a that was a blatant lie. Yes, I am. When the question was, did you get vaccinated against COVID-19? And he said, yes, I am. Okay, uh, no, you're not. And you knew you were not. So... The fact that the national media wants to give him a pass and just say he misled and he may have misled. No, he lied. Folk, there is nothing different from somebody who is HIV positive and they go and they have relations with people without using a condom and knowing it and infecting other people. There's nothing different here. This is an infectious disease. Isn't that why we have protocols in place? Isn't that why the NFL's worried and why they have these protocols in place? So Aaron Rodgers, in essence, is endangering people around him because he told people that he was, in fact, vaccinated for COVID-19. So if you tell people that you are vaccinated and you're not, so people feel comfortable with you not wearing a mask and being in close proximity and touching and all that stuff, right? You're endangering other people's lives from one of the most infectious diseases in American history. So this is no different than, again, somebody who's HIV positive, runs around purposely, you know, has relations with people, doesn't use any form of protection, and they infect people. This is no different. If the NFL is the big, bad social justice warrior that they claim to be, they're here about social justice and they're here about right over wrong. And they are here for the people and they are here for the fans and they are here to support everybody in whatever cause they believe in. If that's the NFL and you have one of your poster boys in Aaron Rodgers, the face of the shield running around lying and you do nothing to discipline him, especially nothing that's serious. I know you're trying to, you know, force people to believe that this joke of a $14,000 fine is supposed to be something. And then the alleged threat that if it happens again, there will be, you know, alleged suspensions and things of that nature, which is a joke because I will venture to say that if there was going to be a suspension, it would be at the start of next season anyway. They wouldn't do anything that would stop Aaron Rodgers from playing in the playoffs this year. Let me be clear about that. Because if they're not willing to do nothing now, and believe me, it's completely financial, because financial matters over the alleged beliefs of the NFL about people being vaccinated and having to get vaccinated and all the stuff that they preach that they obviously don't believe in, because here's Aaron Rodgers, a star in the face of the NFL, laughing and saying, I don't want to do this. And I'm going to lie to people, but you have the national media running around helping you say, no, he misled. He didn't lie, which is a load of garbage. But the bottom line is, if there were an actual suspension that we're going to get laid out, it wouldn't even be enforced until the beginning of next year when it doesn't matter. Because again, they won't do anything to affect Aaron Rodgers because everybody wants to do nothing but kiss Aaron Rodgers' butt. From the NFL down to all the national sports media guys, all the guys who claim to be social justice warriors, all the guys like Colin Cowherd and Keyshawn and Joy Taylor. But let's specifically talk about Colin Cowherd and Joy Taylor, the people who arrogantly always sit there and are condescending towards people who don't want to get vaccinated, make fun of them, say all these things about people to try and make them feel dumb, call them flat earthers because they don't want to get vaccinated when legitimately there are reasons why people would not want to get vaccinated, but not according to Colin and Joy Taylor, they will be condescending and make fun of you and tell you you're a flat earther because you don't want to get vaccinated. But then when Aaron Rodgers does it, all of a sudden, oh no, first of all, he didn't lie. And secondly, oh no, 
it, it's okay. He got fined. We're good. Let's move on. Why? Because all they want is for Aaron Rodgers to continue to play and for them to be able to have football include Aaron Rodgers because they care more about football than they do the people because they, like the rest of the NFL and most of the people that are in media that talk about being social justice warriors and caring about people and caring about coach, they're false prophets, liars. They don't mean what they say. They don't follow what they say. They talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. That is what they do. They are fake. They are false. They're a facade. They don't believe in what they say. That's why I prefer that these people talk about sports and stay out of other things because they're hypocrites, they're arrogant, they're condescending, and they don't mean what they say anyways. They're just there to try and make a paycheck and make you believe something that isn't really true. But it's amazing. They're arrogant. Joy Taylor has said that she stopped being friends with people because they didn't get vaccinated and she couldn't deal with dumb people and she can't deal with dumb people. And if they're dumb people and they won't get vaccinated, she can't be their friends anymore. So she actually stopped being friends with people. But when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, she don't have anything to say. All of a sudden, it's okay. He got fined. Let's move on. But yet your arrogance and your big mouth says that you can't be friends with people because they didn't get vaccinated. And now all of a sudden when it's Aaron Rodgers, oh, well, he, you know, he got fined. Huh? He he knows he paid the price. He wasn't able to play in last week's game. And, and maybe he might not be able to play if he doesn't clear protocols in this Sunday's game. Okay, well, that's not any kind of a sanction by the NFL. And that doesn't show me that you believe the words that keep coming out of your mouth when you make fun of people and you're condescending and you try and shame them into believing that they need to hurry up and go get vaccinated. So it's amazing to me. I sit here and I listen to all these hypocrites say all these things and tell people how they're supposed to do this and they're supposed to do that. But when it affects somebody in their circle, all of a sudden they start dancing around it. All of a sudden, it doesn't mean as much anymore. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter that Aaron didn't get vaccinated. It doesn't matter that Aaron lied, right? But let it be a politician they don't like. And as soon as they tell something that's not a lie, but something that the other side of the media will try and twist, they'll jump on board with it. They'll call him a liar. They'll say they're this. They'll say they're that. But when Aaron Rodgers gets busted in a flat out lie, he just maybe might have misled you or you might have misunderstood what he said. Uh, nobody misunderstood. The question was simple. Did you get vaccinated against COVID-19? Yes, I did. Granted, he used a different word other than vaccinated. As And again, as if that's supposed to give him some kind of a pass, because that's what the media wants to go with. That's what they want to believe in. Because Aaron's a smart guy, and they like and respect Aaron. It's amazing. When they like somebody, they could do no wrong. When they don't like somebody, they could do no right. Even when the story that's being told isn't 100% factual, if they're on the other side of their political agenda, they will tell you that wholeheartedly those people are liars and deceivers and don't know what they're talking about and, and they're conspiracy theorists. But when it's their guy, and that's another thing, they consistently and constantly call people who are not vaccinated conspiracy theorists. They don't say that about Aaron Rodgers. They don't say anything condescending about Aaron Rodgers. They're too busy being worried about kissing his butt. So they won't say anything about Aaron Rodgers. They leave him alone. Nothing condescending, not being a smart butt like they normally are to Joe 9 and 5 guy, not doing any of the things they do when it's a normal fan or anybody who's not in their little circle. They're condescending to those people. They try to shame them when it comes to vaccinations. They try to shame them when it's their beliefs. They try to tell everybody, oh, they must be a flat earther. But when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, nothing to see here. Everything's good. He, he you know, didn't really lie to anybody. He believed that he did get something done because he did have a treatment. Okay. Yeah. He didn't really lie. Sure he didn't. Yeah. Okay. Sure he didn't. Yeah. Okay. I believe you. So it's amazing. The hypocrites in the national media and the lengths they'll go to to kiss Aaron Rodgers' butt instead of being honest and saying he lied because he did and that he should be penalized. Instead saying he shouldn't be penalized 
for whatever the reason is. And again, I don't understand what the reason is because I can't find a single one that's viable. and can't find a single one that makes sense. You can't tell me that Aaron Rodgers should not be suspended for lying. Because again, according to these people, Colin Cowherd, Joy Taylor, uh, Keyshawn Johnson, J-Dub, all these other people, you know, Max Kellerman, the worst of the worst, especially when it comes to be condescending and trying to shame people into believing they need to go and get vaccinated. Uh, when it comes to all these people, you know, it's because they care and they're concerned and it would be better for everybody if they go get vaccinated. Okay, great. Except you don't really believe that because now with Aaron Rodgers, you're not the condescending smart butts that you normally are. Now, not all of the people I just named are condescending, really. You know, the biggest two, the biggest three, Max Kellerman, Colin Cowherd, Joy Taylor, they're really the big three condescending people that talk down to people and they're rude and they're arrogant. And, you know, they're, for a lack of a predator, it's obvious they're stuck up. There's no doubt about it in any way, shape, or form. The three of them are obviously stuck up. There's no way to sugarcoat that in any way, shape, or form. They are stuck up. No way around that. That's obvious. That's apparent. It comes out over the airwaves every single day. But it's amazing. Those same stuck up people with those perfectly thought out thoughts that if you don't believe what they believe, you must be dumb as a doorknob. But when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't share their beliefs, they're not the arrogant, smart butts that they normally are. Hypocrites. Absolutely hypocritical. It's amazing. And it's pathetic. And they should just shut up when it comes to anything but sports. They're not bad when it comes to sports, but when it comes to other stuff, they're arrogant, they're stuck up, they're annoying, and they should probably just shut up and stick to sports because that's just my opinion. I'm not telling anybody how to think, by the way. I'm not like them trying to tell people how to think. I'm not arrogant like them to tell people how to think, but that is my opinion, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that would agree with my assessment. All right, now. Let me see something real quick before I get into this story that I know I'm going to end with here. Uh, power rankings. Let's do this really quickly. NFL power rankings. Um, let me get into number one, Arizona Cardinals. This is according to uh, the four-letter network. Arizona Cardinals, number one. Tennessee Titans, number two. I'm agreeing with both of those so far. Green Bay Packers, number three. I agree with that. Uh, Rams, number four. You could even put them tied for number three, to be honest. But the Rams, number four. Uh, it's a good list so far. I can't complain uh, until you get here. Tampa Bay, number five. They're not that good. They haven't beat anybody. It's so annoying to see teams with weak schedules that they haven't beat anybody, and yet they get propelled this high. Uh, Tampa Bay, number five, though. Baltimore should be above Tampa Bay, coming in at number six. Uh, Dallas Cowboys should not be as high as they are at number seven either. They haven't beat anybody who's a playoff contender, and just got their butts kicked by the Denver Broncos. How can they be number seven? Unbelievable. Buffalo Bills, same thing. You just got beat by Jacksonville, and they got you number eight? Are you serious right now with this list? Chargers, five and three. You barely got past Philadelphia, although Philadelphia is an improving team, uh, but I don't know that I'd have L.A. Chargers at number nine. Uh, Cleveland Browns, number 10. Okay, yeah maybe even a little higher right now at the moment. Uh, Saints at number 11. Mm, yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, Patriots at number 12. Uh, the Chiefs, give me a break at number 13. Well, no, I take it back. Maybe the Chiefs are in a good – I said they're a middle-of-the-road team, so I'd put them about 15, 16. So not bad if they got them at 13, I guess. Same thing with Pittsburgh. They got them at number 14. Uh, Broncos, number 15. I'd have them just a couple of ticks lower maybe. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, number 16. That's okay. Raiders at number 17. Falcons, 18. Indianapolis Colts at number 19. Minnesota Vikings at 20. Uh, Seattle Seahawks at 21. 49ers at 22. I'd actually have them lower. Uh, Philadelphia, 23. Carolina, 24. Uh, the Bears, 25. The Giants, 26. Uh, Washington at 27. Jacksonville at 28. Eight, and you got the New York Jets at 29, Miami Dolphins at number 30, Houston Texans at 31, and then you have the Detroit Lions, of course, at 32. So not too many things that I see bad with that list. Now, I've been on this for a while. I've been yelling about this for a while. Uh, Robert Sarver, Suns owner, Phoenix Suns owner to be exact, 
uh, the allegations against him, sexual misconduct uh, in regards to his behavior, uh, comments he's made. And then, of course, you know, you have alleged racism remarks and, and they're all alleged at this point. However, however, a couple of interesting things have come to my attention. Uh, got a buddy of mine sent me a couple of stories. Uh, one of them here is Penny Sarver, wife of Robert Sarver sent messages to three former Phoenix Suns employees. Let me read this to you. Let me throw on my handy dandy glasses and let me read some of this story to you here. It says three former Phoenix Suns employees have received messages from Penny Sarver, the wife of Robert Sarver, who is the team's majority owner. Two messages came from the at Penn Sar Instagram account and another was a text message from a number that belongs to Penny Sarver. These former employees say they consider the messages an attempt to intimidate them. The NBA has launched an investigation, most people know that, into Sarver and the Suns in the wake of the Four Letter Network publishing a story based on interviews with more than 70 current and former Suns employees who described a sometimes toxic and hostile workplace during Sarver's 17-year tenure in Phoenix. When reads per comment, Penny Sarver confirmed she sent the messages and said she looks forward to to the NBA's investigation. Pretty arrogant because these messages weren't exactly polite and weren't exactly good. I don't want to go too deep and read too much into this particular story because, again, uh, it's long. It's lengthy. I should probably read some more. Maybe I'll get back to you on a future cast. But the bottom line is I think that's pretty arrogant of her. Uh, she might have done herself a better service by keeping quiet, saying no comment. But, again... There's a lot of stuff in these messages. It'd be a good article for you to go and read if you got a chance. Again, the title of it, Penny Sarver, wife of Robert Sarver, sent messages to three former Phoenix Suns employees. It is on the Four Letter Network site. So you can go check out that story. It's a good story. A lot of information. A lot of interesting information. Things are starting to get dark and grim for Robert Sarver, if you ask me. Not looking real good. Got another story. Trying to reach it right now. This one was sent to me on my Twitter account. Uh, again, buddy of mine sent this one to me. I'm just going to read you what the story is about. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find it as we speak. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on one second. I apologize. Um, let me see if I can find it. Let me, oh, darn it. I'm on the wrong phone. It's on my other phone. I apologize. Uh, there's another story. That's out there in regards to Robert Sarver. He allegedly, at a roast that he did, made some comments. And it is a video of Robert Sarver making the comments. Now, full disclosure, I have not watched the video as of yet. I will today. I'll get back to you on it tomorrow. However, with that being said, again, the key to the story is because a lot of the local guys, when they were in defense mode, said there's no videos there's no corroboration. Uh, they don't know if Earl Watson is somebody they could trust as far as the allegations he's making against Robert Sarver. And they don't have any current players saying anything against Robert Sarver. The media here has been in all out defense mode pretty much against Robert Sarver, or they've been acting like there's not enough information. So there's not really a lot to report. And again, I'll watch the news today, see if that changes at all, especially with the new revelations. But again, now there is a video. I haven't watched the video, but there is a video where Robert Sarver is making some remarks that are inappropriate. So again, things are starting to look dark for Robert Sarver. I'm just saying, it's getting dark. And I told the local media here they should have been talking about this weeks ago, but they stayed quiet, acted as if there was nothing here, no story, nothing to tell. And then until they were forced by the four-letter network when they dropped their story, then they talked about it. And again, then they went in defense mode and again, or they acted like there wasn't enough information. And yet here comes all the information. Had they done their due diligence like they're supposed to, but they have chosen not to, but had they done their due diligence like they were supposed to, they would have known all this information beforehand and known that I was right in regards to the fact that there was a lot to report in regards to this story. Now, I did not. And still have not said Robert Sarver is guilty. All I'm saying is there is information. It needs to come out. Quit being judgmental. Quit being defensive. I am not condemning Robert as well. What I am saying is based on what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, it's looking a little darker now, but I'm still not saying 
that the NBA needs to force him to sell. That is the NBA's decision to make. Irregardless of what I read and what I see, I'm not going to say anything about that until the NBA makes their actual decision because that's their decision to make as far as making him sell the team. But there has been a lot of defense mode, people making you know news stories about Larry Fitzgerald and now he is defending Robert Sarver. And again, I said when that comment came out that there's no way in the world you can tell me that Larry Fitzgerald is going to put his reputation on the line and say that Robert Sarver could not be guilty of any of these things. There's no way in the world you can tell me Larry Fitzgerald would do that. There's no way. And I don't believe that. And, and the story, by the way, that I went and looked at where they tried to say that the letter that Larry Fitzgerald had his name on, along with all of the other minority owners of the Phoenix Suns, that letter didn't come out and say that they didn't believe that any of this could be possible. It's not what it said. They said that to their knowledge, they don't know of any incidents. But it didn't say that we don't believe it, that these people just have access to ground. It didn't say anything like that at all. But the news reports that were coming out would want you to believe that. They tried to make people believe that that's what the letter was. But when I went and read it, it's not what it says at all. Just as to their knowledge, they weren't aware of any incidents. Didn't say that they wholeheartedly believe in Robert Sarver and there's no way in the world he could have done this and we stand behind him unequivocally. That's not what the letter said, even though the news reports wanted you to believe that's what the letter said. So again, I'm going to read into that. Uh, last night was the kickoff to college basketball. It was a great night of basketball. Man, I watched a lot of it. A lot of great games. A lot of great games. I'm a U of A Wildcat fan. Enjoyed that game last night. Uh, a lot of great games. A lot of great games going to be taking place tonight, so I'm going to do some more watching in regards to college basketball. Of course, I got some NBA basketball, so I'm going to be toggling between channels to watch the games. Uh, so we'll probably talk a little bit basketball tomorrow. We're definitely going to be talking more Robert Sarver tomorrow. We're definitely going to talk about the Thursday night football game that's coming up tomorrow. So a lot of things to talk about tomorrow. You guys have a great evening. Enjoy all the basketball action, and we will talk again tomorrow.